God is good all the time. And God is good, yes, all the time. And God is good all the time. God is good all the time. And God is good all the time. And God is good, yes, all the time. And God is good. All the time, and God is good all the time. Well, I know I don't deserve all of His good, and I know I don't serve Him just like I should. Well, there's many things not the way they should be, but I'm grateful that He keeps being good to me. I say the Lord is good to me all the time. Trust and He'll be good to you. Uh, my father is good, yeah. Hey, God is good all the time. Well, I went in the valley one day to pray. My soul got happy and I stayed all day. You know my hand got stuck to the gospel plow. And I won't take nothing for my journey right now. Well, if you don't believe that I've been redeemed, come on and follow me down to that Jordan stream. You know I stepped in the water and the water was cold. Till my natural body but it harm my soul. The Lord is good to me all the time. Trust in He'll be good to you all the time. Oh, my Father is good to you all the time. Oh, my Father is good all the time. Oh, my Father is good all the time. Oh, my Father is good all the time. Follow me down to that Jordan stream. You know I stepped in the water and the water was cold. Chill my natural body but didn't harm my soul. The Lord is good to me. Trust and he'll be good to you. Oh, my father is good, yeah. Hey, God is good all the time. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen again. God is good how often? And all the time. Keep your distance. Just look at him and say, neighbor, God loves you. And I do too. And if you love me as much as I love you, then nothing can break. I love him too. Amen. Amen. We would just like to take this moment to say welcome and thankful for all of you all that are here with us this morning, as well as all of you that are at home and watching this via live stream, be it Facebook, YouTube, or Twitter this morning. We like to say to every mother, happy Mother's Day on this morning. And we pray that you don't just feel like you're celebrated on this day, but we pray that you're celebrated every day that you live. Amen. Thank you for your love and all that you have done as a mother. And we're just thankful to be in God's house on this morning. Ain't that right? David said it this way. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, come, let us go into the house of the Lord. And certainly in spite of everything that is going on in our world and even in our personal lives at this moment, still we're glad to be in God's house on this morning. Everything on the outside, leave that behind. Come on the inside with the praise on your mind. For God is worthy to be praised. Amen. He is so worthy. He's so worthy. Anybody come to hear a word from the Lord this morning? You come to hear a word? I believe you came to the right place this morning. Follow me, if you will, to the gospel according to St. John. The gospel according to St. John. And 
We're going to chapter number four, and I'm going to read verses four through 15 for this morning. Thank all of those that participated in the devotional part of our service. God is good, not just some of the time, but he is good all the time. John chapter four, I'm going to read verses four through 15. The grass withers and the flower thereof shall fade away, but the word of God shall stand forever. John chapter 4, beginning at verse number 4. You say, there, say, I'm there. Wait, okay. You see Exodus, you're in the wrong place. All right, John chapter 4, beginning at verse number 4. And the Bible reads, he had to travel through Samaria. So he came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the property that Jacob had given his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus worn out from his journey, sat down at the well. It was about noontime, and a woman of Samaria came to draw water. Give me a drink, Jesus said to her, because his disciples had gone into town to buy food. How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman, she asked him. For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered, if you knew the gift of God, and who is saying to you, give you a drink, you would ask him and he would give you living water. Sir, said the woman, you don't even have a bucket and the well is deep. So where do you get this living water? You aren't greater than your father Jacob, are you? He gave us the well and drank from it, as did his sons and livestock. Jesus said, everyone who drinks from this water will never get thirsty again. But whoever drinks from the water that I will give him will never get thirsty again. In fact, the water I give him will become a well of water springing up in him for eternal life. Sir, the woman said to him, give me this water so I won't get thirsty and come here to draw any more water. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, dear Lord, be acceptable in thy sight. I want to give for our message on this morning. He met her at the well. He met her at the well. Now, you must understand that back in the day, they, they're not like us today. They didn't have Buicks. They didn't have Hondas. They didn't have Mercedes Benz. They didn't have any of that. So most of the time when they were traveling, they was going somewhere by foot. And it took them a long while. If somebody was going to do some just a measly errand, it would take them a long time to get that errand done. And, and, and you would think that if you sent your disciples, 12 of them to be exact, to get lunch and all of them walked off and left you by yourself, you got 12 men going to get lunch for one man. Seemed like he was pretty hungry. And it seemed like they would have had enough food that would have been able to feed him and them as well. And then when they came back with their lunch, here he is sitting by the well. Talking to this woman, and, and though they had too much respect for him to question him, the Gospel of St. John reads their mind and says, wait a minute, I thought you were hungry. Now, now you say you got meat that we know not of, and, and I thought you were tired, and we come back, and you are engrossed in this conversation with this woman. He says, it ain't what y'all think. You must realize, brothers and sisters, for Jesus to say that he must needs go through Samaria, that in and of itself was startling alone. Because if we would excuse the fact that he had become engrossed with this conversation with this woman of a questionable past, we still have to be the glaring reality that this was a Jewish teacher doing this in Samaria. Particularly if you understand, as I do, that Samaria was a particular area that most Jews tried to avoid. You never found Jews going through Samaria. You would always find them going around Samaria. And the theology of the time lended itself to an ideology that any Samaritan woman was in a constant perpetual state of uncleanness. The Samaritan people were not respected as being legitimate believers in the first place after that Jewish Orthodox tradition and 
Can I give you a little history of this phone? We might as well go to school for a minute. And you will understand that the Samaria, Samaria is a result of when the tribe split in the Old Testament. About 700 years before Christ was ever born, they split in the Old Testament. And all of the various ethnic groups that they could gather from different regions that were not a part of the tribe of the two that were separated in the split, they brought them into an area that would later be called Samaria. And these seven or eight ethnic groups that were gathered together were not people who worshipped Jehovah at all, but they were heathens and they were rebellious and they were cultish and, and they worshipped various gods, about seven different gods they had and, and some of them they worshipped by offering up human sacrifices. They worshipped their gods for a period of time until the wild beast came along. And you remember that the Bible says that the lions in particular just roaming around and they began to be turned loose on those folk down there in the Sumerian area and they were being destroyed by those wild beasts. And the attack from the wild beasts got them to a point where they say, you know what? You know, we don't really believe in your God, but can you teach us about your God? Because we think that we might have angered him in some way since all of this is going on. Now, consequently, they began to embrace the Torah which is the Old Testament theology and they began to embrace the Pentateuch in particular and they included it in their worship and now I didn't say they were converted to it but they began to look at it and I, I say they included it in their worship and they included it into their worship so that they had some aspect of Orthodox Judaism and then they had some aspect of human sacrifice with their polluted theology with all this various stuff going on. It was just a mess. Somebody say it was just a mess. And this is not strange to us because you know people in your own life that talk a little bit of Bible and they mix it with a little bit of this, and then they mix it with a little bit of that. And, and you'd be surprised at the people, as long as you throw a few scriptures and things, that they will eat it up and they will never question the authenticity or the intensity or the integrity of the subject matter that is at hand. And, and that was the Samaritans. They had a little bit of Orthodox Judaism mixed in with a lot of cults and sorcery and witchcraft and idolatry, and they mixed it all up together and began to offer it up before God. The Jews were so offended by it that they gradually distanced themselves from this group of people in Samaria. They were so distanced by them that even after the Jews had gone through Babylonian captivity and the temple of Solomon had been destroyed, when they came back and desperately were trying to rebuild the temple and the Samaritans tried to help them, they didn't even accept the help from the Samaritans. Even after 70 years of captivity, they still did not want to partner with the people that had diluted the understanding of who Jehovah God had actually was. They chose to do it on their own. So here it is. They, the ancestors of the Samaritans would have been represented through people like Sam Ballad and Tobiah. Y'all remember them when, when they began to agonize the work of Nehemiah because they were resentful of the fact that they were not included in the rebuilding of Jerusalem. And they were a mixed multitude and a mix all kinds of ideas. And these people are confused. And, and what church people have a tendency to do when they think that you are confused and they don't necessarily agree with you, they will either attack you or alienate you. I'm going to say that for y'all that's watching. When, when people feel like they don't understand you, they will either attack you or they will uh, alienate you. But I'm so glad that Jesus is not like church folk. Am I right about it? Because he said, I must needs go to Samaria. In other words, I'm going out of my way to go after a group of people that everybody else has rejected and left on the outskirts because just because you have not included them does not mean I ain't got a plan and a purpose for their life. And not only are they important enough that I have added them to my agenda, I have included them in my itinerary, but I'm willing to sit by the well yes, and find one that I can break down this wall and get Samaria into my plan. So, so now, I would have thought Jesus being the son of God, Jesus being the, of the, 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 the tribe of Judah, Jesus being of the seed of Abraham, Jesus being of the root of Jesse, that if he was going to infiltrate the Samaritans and break down the world, he might have talked to their magistrates. He might have talked to their kings. 
he, he, might, he might have talked to their leadership or their authority. I would have thought that he would have made an appointment. And, and, and at least with one of their priests in their ruined temple and battered their scripture against scripture to bring them into the reformation of the truth. I would have thought that Jesus would have written a blog site and said, y'all know what? Those folk down there, they are in error. They are not right down there. They are in heresy and attack their integrity. I would have thought that Jesus would have put them on a blast in some sort of way, dealing with their leadership to break down their city, but he didn't do that. Yes. Jesus didn't pick on the, arist- on the aristocrats of Samaria. He doesn't pick the religious scribes of Samaria, but he sits by the well and he's not even waiting on a man. He waits on a woman, a woman of Sakaar, to come down by the well. Now, the Bible never gives this woman a name. He doesn't give us a name for this woman. She is a nameless woman. And, and yet Jesus sits down by the well and waits to meet her. He sends his boys on an errand because sometimes even the people who are with you do not understand your vision. Yes. Sometimes even the people that are with you can be looking at the same thing you're looking at, but y'all are looking at two different things. Thank you. Y'all are looking at two totally different things, and they will alienate you from the very people that God sent you to serve and to save because there's nothing and there is no group of people that act any more important than the people that are with God. Now, often people sometimes act more important, you know, than, than, than they really think they are, you know, because, you know, the Bible says, you know, let any man that thinks he's there take heed lest he fall, you know, because sometimes, you know, if we're not too careful, we get just a little bit, y'all, y'all know what I'm talking about. They, they had already, y'all remember these folk right here, these disciples had already tried to shut up Black Bartimaeus. Who sat down by the highway side begging. They said he was too loud. He making too much noise. And what about the woman who came to Jesus crying about her daughter? They said, send her away because she's crying after us. And these disciples would have messed up the mission because they were so indoctrinated with their preconceived ideologies that there was no room for revelation to break through their orthodox religion. Yes. That's it. So some people are so religious that they miss revelation that there are other people that even though they may not be theologically wrong, God still got a plan for their life. And if you would give them time, that plan could work out in their life. But so many of us, we forget the grace that was given to us that when we see somebody else going through a similar plight that we once went through in life, we want to condemn them. We want to tear them down. and We want to shut them down. But you wanted somebody to build you up. So, so he sat down by the well and, and he began to wait for this woman to come down to the well and he began to wait for this woman and when she comes down to the well she got an attitude. I believe she was a sister. <laughs> she had the kind of attitude that results from people who are used to being attacked. You ever meet people like that that are used to being attacked so every time you come they you know, they're they on the fist mode, like, like, what's going on? Like, which way you coming from? Like, I'm ready. Like, what you got for me today? Like, she does not wait for him to attack her. She doesn't even give him the opportunity. She comes down by the well, and she attacks him. She said, now, now your people and my people don't deal with each other. You know we don't like each other, so you ain't got to be phony. You ain't got to be fake trying to come down here and be nice to me. Keep that same energy that y'all been having these past years. Keep it that very same way. You ain't got to get, we ain't got to talk, we ain't got to never. Sometimes, people who have been hurt are the hardest people in the world to help. Yes. Come on now. Yes. People that have been hurt are the hardest people for you to be able to help. Because even when you reach out to help them, they already got an attitude. You have, and you have never been fought like you will be fought by somebody you are trying to save from drowning. Even though your intentions are good, their desperation is so bad that they can get you killed trying to help somebody else that's hurt. But Jesus begins to deal with her until the next phrase, she goes from being sarcastic to calling him sir. And I'm like, she called him, she called him sir, because now she begins to understand that he is somebody to whom respect is due. And, and, and then later, as she acknowledges him as a prophet, 
And, and, and then later, she brings up that you must be the Messiah. And, and then later, she, she says, I am he. And, and look at how God is bringing this woman into gradual revelation. He goes from being an enemy and an alien to a sir. And from a sir to a prophet. And from a prophet to a Messiah. Isn't it nice how God will bring you into truth? Yes. Not one step, but several steps to bring you into the enlightenment of what God would do in your life. And I want to take a moment to just thank him that I haven't always thought the way I think now. And, and, I, and I, I didn't always know what I know now, and I didn't always feel the way that I feel right now. But when I had the wrong attitude and the wrong spirit and the wrong aspect of faith, I want to thank him for being the kind of patient God that would not have cut me out of his schedule, but he sat down by the well and waited for me to come and see about him. He said, I am he that speaketh to thee. Now, 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 somebody just say he is, he is. Now, everything you ever been looking for, he is. Everything you ever been searching for, he is. Everything you've been crying about, he is. God, he's more than the God of just your grandma and of your uncle and your wife. He is Lord of all. Yeah. Now, now, everything that we've been worried about, God can take care of that. Everything we've been searching for, God can take care of that. He's more. He's everything that we need, everything that we want, everything that we seek, everything that we long for, everything that we've been craving for, and he's been waiting for you. Amen. Now, all of your life, all while you was drunk, all while you was high, teacher, teacher. all while you was in hotels and motels, teacher. all while you were serving other gods, yeah. He sat down by the well and he waited on you. you. You might not be important to anybody else, but you must be important to God because he stopped the gun from killing you. He stopped the car wreck from destroying you. He stopped the disease from attacking your body. He said, leave him alone. I'm going to sit right here and wait until they come back. Ain't, ain't you glad that we serve a God that even when man has counted you out and said that nothing else can happen, God says as long as I'm sitting by the well waiting on him, there's still a plan, there's still an opportunity for something to happen in their life. Somebody say he waited on me. While you was acting crazy, he waited on me. While you was in your sins, he waited on you. While you was in a state of confusion, he waited on you. While you was distracted, he waited on you. While you was in other things, he waited on you. And if he never does anything else, I can thank God because he waited on me. Now this woman comes down to the well who has the social dysfunction of being unable to come down to the well when the other women come down to the well, comes an odd time of the day to avoid interaction with other women. She comes down to the well because she's carrying water pots. And she comes to draw water. Water pots. We heard about water pots before, ain't that right? Yeah. We had preached a sermon about that a few weeks ago. We talked about the wedding that went wild. What kind of wedding it is you running out of wine? Y'all, they ain't no kind of wedding. So, so, so he, when, they, when they came, we ran out of water pots, and we saw the same kinds of pots coming down to be filled with water that might be turned to wine. Isn't it funny how God will always fill whatever empty thing you make available to him? Come on now. Isn't it, isn't it funny that whatever you are willing to bring to God and offer him, he will fill it if you allow him? What the well is in the earth, Christ is in the spirit, for Christ is of Jacob. He is born to Israel. He is the well of living water. So what you have here is a well sitting on a well. Yes, Come on, sir. man. Come on now. Teach it. And here comes an empty woman down to the well that she has already come to all of her life. But now she walks up and there's a well sitting on a well. He starts the conversation by saying, give me a drink. I'm thirsty. Give me something to drink. Knowing that her pots were empty. When she asked him the question, knowing that her religious dogma would alienate her from giving him water, knowing that even his own disciples 
would not approve of asking this woman for some water, seeing that she was a Samaritan woman. He knows she cannot give him what he asked for. God always asks you to give something that we cannot give without him. That is to request. He will create a thirst to ask him to give us what we're looking for. Now, who good God am I? That the well is sitting on a well. And he asked her for water. And, and she gets a little bit suspicious, you know. She said, she said, uh, you come here saying you want something to drink. And you didn't bring nothing to draw with. <laughs> what, you, what, what you gonna drink out of your hands? You ain't got no cup, you ain't got no saucer. She said, she said, you ain't got nothing to draw with. And he said, Woman, if you knew the gift of God, you would ask me for one. Now, he's switching up on her because he asked her for water. He said, but if you saw the whale that's sitting on the whale, instead of cross-examining me about that which is temporal, you would bypass your whale and come down to my whale and ask me for that which is eternal. Yes. She says, oh yeah, what's so good about your water? He said, you know what? If you drink of the water that's up in here, you will never thirst again. But if you drink of the water that's in here, you will never be thirsty. Now the woman's a little bit confused. She, she knows she has a need. She knows, she knows she needs to draw from the well. She doesn't know whether to draw from the physical or to draw from the spiritual. She says, but this is water, and this is a well, and this is where everybody goes. And he is saying, it ain't what you think. Just because everybody goes there doesn't mean that it will satisfy your thirst. It may look like it will satisfy your thirst, but it is not what it looks like. I don't know who I'm preaching to this morning, but I believe this is for somebody. The enemy will sometimes show you how to get your needs met, and he'll say that he got a solution for your problem. But I want to tell somebody this morning to give you a warning that everything that look good just might not be good. It may not be what you think it is. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Some trust in horses, some trust in chariots, but I will remember the name of the Lord. Yes, sir. Tell somebody ain't what you think. Now, now all that glitters ain't gold. Come on, now, bro. Just because it winks at you don't mean that it's a blessing. Come on, now. Just because it takes advantage of your need doesn't mean that God has answered your request. You need to stop and be still. Amen. Now, this saying that coming from Ishmael is a sign that Isaac is on the way. The false always come before the real. And if you are strong enough to say no to this well, you will open up to this well, and your latter days shall be greater than your former days. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but if you might just learn how to give God praise while you're waiting. Yeah. Learn how to trust in God until he passes by. Stop getting in a hurry and stop rushing God. And let me tell you, you will be blessed beyond measure when you learn how to simply sit and wait on God. Be of good courage. Let him strengthen your heart. Yes, amen. And she says, well, well, give me this water that I thirst not. Neither will I come hither to draw meaning. Give me some of this water so I can stop walking down here to draw out this well. She says, well, since you brought it up, I'm tired, stranger. I'm tired of going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And the same old stuff just gets me back for a little while. And then I got to go back and do it again and again and again and again. And, 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 and I'm glad I, I, I'm at a place now where I value my time. And I don't want to go through this year the same stuff that I put up with last year and going through the same old dead beast stuff to get a little water to get me by for the weekend. Mercy, mercy. Give me this water so I never thirst again. Settle down. Master, what God has called you to do, step by step, you'll get that. Lord, I'm ready for some water. Yes, sir. Ready? She says, what you going to drink out of? 
Man, you ain't brought no cup. You ain't got no pitcher. How are you even going to get the water out of here? He said, woman, you don't even know. And ain't it funny how God would often ask somebody for something that he knows that you cannot give him? Yes. Because altogether, what you really think he's talking about, he's not really talking about. Because man too often time is looking at the physical, but Jesus is talking about it in the spiritual sense. Amen. Talking about it in the spiritual sense. So, so this woman, this woman sits by the way. Huh? No other man would have stopped and talked about her, but ain't, ain't that just like Jesus? Yes. That the very folk, the other folk don't want to fool with, Jesus want to fool with them. Yes, sir. Ain't that just like Jesus that the very folk, the other folk say, oh, you are not fool with them, you know, they such and such, and they used to this, and they used to that, but they did it, and I'm so glad that when Jesus instituted our salvation, he didn't say, whosoever will, accept them, accept them, other than them, other than them, but he said, whosoever will, let them come. Everybody in here got a story. Everybody in here got a path. I don't care if you've been saved 50 years of your life, you still struggling. You still got some stuff that you are having to deal with. Never get to a place in your life when you look down on the next person simply because God has not passed by the well as of yet. There was a time in your life he met you at the well. You were drunk. You were stumbling. You were high. You were down. And you were depressed. But he sat down. Yes, sir. Thank you. He sat down. Thank you. By the way. Yes, sir. And had a conversation with a woman. And, and, you know, most of the time, you know, when somebody preached this text, you know, they want to run to, oh, she had five husbands. And the one she was living with, one husband. There's so many folk want to talk about the woman that was caught in the adultery. But you can't commit adultery by yourself. I often said that the reason they didn't mention the man because he was one of the one holding rocks. Isn't it funny how folk can be twined up in the mess, but yet when stuff hit the fan, they want to put it all on? <laughs> oh, man, you better be careful who you're getting dealing with. Everybody that say they're going to ride ain't going to ride. He sat down by the well. Aren't you glad God stopped by the well and saw you? Aren't you glad? That while everybody else was passing by, Jesus decided to stop by the well. I'm so glad that he stopped by. This very picture of what we see here, him doing for this woman, shows the inclusiveness of God. And it shows how he does not want to ostracize anybody from the faith. He does not want to ostracize anybody from receiving salvation That's or right. coming to know him in the part right. of their sins. He wants everybody to come. Folks, well, you would have never caught a Jewish man going through Samaria. They consider them folk down there to be nothing but common dogs. No. That's what they no. consider those people to be. Jesus. Jesus. No. And man, I'm sure somebody passed and that man, what are you over there doing? Why are you talking to that woman for? But Jesus stopped and had a conversation with the woman. Yes. And that conversation blessed her life. And a question that she asked blessed our life. Because yes. you remember later on in the text that we're reading right here in John chapter 4, as they got deep on in the conversation, the woman said, well, I got a question. She said, we worship here on this mountain. But you Jews say that Jerusalem is the proper place where one ought to worship God. She said, so which is the proper place, Jerusalem or this mountain? Yes. Jesus said to her woman, he said, believe me. He said, the hour is coming and now is. When you were neither in Jerusalem nor on this mountain worship the Father. He said, but God is a what? Spirit. And those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. I can imagine this woman right here for the rest of her day ran about telling folk about a man that she had saw. After the conversation, she ran in the town telling me, hey, come and see a man. Come and see a man that told me everything that I ever did. And just to think, when he came down and sat by the well and met you, he knew about everything that you had been through. Yes, Thank you. Thank you. Everywhere that you had been. Thank you. 
everything that you had done, he knew about it, but still. He waited. He didn't, he didn't want to check in the clock. He just waited. By the way. Sound like a mother's love. That never ended. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to hang in here. I'm going to fight to the end kind of love. Yes, sir. Come on. He sat down by the wheel and waited on him. He's waiting on you this morning. Yes, sir. He's waiting on you. You know, some of us, and just like those Jews of that day, we can get so indoctrinated in our ideologies about how things ought to be that we can miss what God is trying to do in our lives. And, and so often we get so, you know, y'all know, we get so, you know, we, we've been to church two, three Sundays in a row and we've been there on time for communion. We've been giving our offering. We think we're doing pretty good. When in actuality, you got some deep-rooted issues that you really got to deal with. You really got some stuff that you're battling with on the inside. A battle just ain't physical. There could be a mental, spiritual battle that you have going on. That got to be dealt with. That's why he's waiting on you. That's why he's waiting on you. Jesus is not willing that you should be condemned in your present condition. That is why every day that you wake up, there's another chance God says, hey, I'm waiting. What you waiting on? I'm waiting on you. Cup and drink from this water. For the water that I give you is enough thirst to give. And how many of y'all can say, since you found Jesus, your thirst has been quenched? Since you Amen. came Amen. in contact with Jesus, your thirst has been satisfied, and you just drink it from the open yes, He sat down, and he waited on this. My brother, my sister, whoever you are, wherever you are, he's waiting. In your present condition, he's waiting. Ain't you glad God don't wait for you to get it all together until he comes and sits by the well? But he comes and meets you in the midst of your confusion and your uncertainty. And he sits down by the well. I'm so glad that he sat down. But I'm also glad that he got up. Yes, sir. I'm also glad that he got up after his sacrifice for mankind. Jesus is so, he's so long suffering within his spirit. The Bible says that he is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He wanted to let those people of that day know, hey, I got a plan. I'm instituting something, and it's not going to be exclusive, but it's going to be inclusive. And I want people to know whether you're red, yellow, black, or white, so I'll say, y'all precious in my sight. No matter who you are, where you are, where you come from, he wants you to know, hey, you're welcome into my family. You're welcome into my body if you do but only obey. Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus other than trust and obey. He's sitting today waiting on you. Will you come? My brother, my sister, watching this this morning. I want you to know he's waiting on you. In your present condition, wherever you are, the Bible says that while we were yet sinners, not after you got yourself right, but while you were yet a sinner, he died for you. I, like, I say it like this, while you were yet sinning, he was waiting. While you were yet in it, he waited on and he has provided a path for you to escape. Friend, beloved, the hour is drawing near. I know you hear a lot of people say, y'all, with everything going on, we're in the last days. I'd have you to know we've been in the last days for a little over 2,000 years. And we've been constantly waiting and anticipating the coming of the Messiah. But I would have you to know, as some older folk would say, time was. Yeah. And every day that you live, you know that at this moment right now, you are closer to your life's end than you were when you woke up this morning. Every day of our life, we're getting closer and closer to that day, closer and closer to that point. 
So why not take advantage of the moment that you can come to Jesus yes. and get yourself right, get your sins washed away so that you can be in fellowship and in right standing with God. He's waiting on you this morning. He's waiting on you. My brother and my sister, if you are here in this place and you have sin in your life, you, you are standing on, on the outskirts with God. You, you know your relationship is not right with God. You got some things that you're battling with. You're standing in the need of prayer. You had that opportunity this morning to say, hey, I need somebody to pray for me. And, and I'm, I'm so glad that, that, that the prayers of the righteous, they avail as much. And I'm so glad that we have an avenue to which we can go back to where we can talk to God about the concerns and the thoughts that are going on our mind. Oh, what a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. And for those of you that are watching, if you don't yet know the Lord as your Savior, you have not yet had your sins washed away by the blood of the Lamb. You're not a member of the body of Christ, which is the church of Christ. I would let you know that salvation has been brought down. And salvation has been offered to you. It is available today. Come to him. Come believe in his word. Come repenting of your sins. Confess, confess Christ as your Savior. Be baptized for the remission of your sin. Have your sins washed away, done away with. Never to come up before you in this life and neither the life that is to come. And the Lord himself will add you to his body. And if you are here and if you have prayer requests, we pray that you would send those in. Give us the opportunity to pray for you. Give us the opportunity to connect with you. We want to help you in your faith walk with the Lord. And if you are here today, you're standing in the need of prayer, you're subject to the invitation. We beg and we plead with you. While you have this opportunity, while he's sitting today, come and see the master and he'll help you out with what you stand in the need of as together we stand and sing the song he of invitation sweet I know yes he sweet I know and you know that dark clouds may rise strong winds may blow to know that I tell And you know that I found the Savior, and He so sweet I know. If you would give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. Amen. I'm Richard Coffey, Senior Minister of Sweetwater Church of Christ. I'm here with Minister uh, Peterson. I want to introduce him who's doing the pulpit preaching here for us. Hi, Brother Javante Peterson again, minister here at Sweetwater Church of Christ. we just like to take this opportunity to thank you for visiting us. We pray that you were blessed by the worship services. And if by chance you have any questions, we pray that you reach out and contact us so that we can answer any biblical questions that you have. For any Bible question that you can bring, we'll be sure to give you a Bible answer. Remember, morning Bible class starts on Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock. Worship service begins at 10. Afternoon service begins at 6 o'clock. And then midweek Bible study begins at 7. We pray that you come out at any given moment. Come out and worship with us here at the Sweetwater Church of Christ, where the gospel is preached and the water is sweet. God bless you. God bless you. In this old sinful world, my time is running out.
out and the devil won't quit He's trying to blind my eyes to the light of my life But something is sustaining me Deep down within my soul My word is in control And I know it won't be long Till he comes and takes me home I gotta get ready for that day I don't wanna get left outside the gate It's my prayer, it's my plea with you It's where I wanna be